first question what is the one third two third rule um now a lot of you don't understand how this works and you think that when you retire you're going to have all of your pension or your provident money hit your account and you're going to have a sweet retirement it doesn't really work like that especially with the whole two part coming out so the one third two third rule basically states that you are allowed to take one third of your total pension in cash which will be taxed all right the first 550 of that will be uh, tax free in case you make pre previous withdrawals a whole calculation is done and is compounded to make sure that you can't at each point you're not taking your 550 cash all right so you can take that one third uh, do whatever you want with it you don't you're not obligated to take one third you can take less if you want okay and by taking less means you will be paying less tax and the two thirds will go um, into a product that's going to pay you an income during your retirement years now you have a choice of products that you can choose either a living annuity or a life annuity big differences between the two and as you approach retirement, you should be sitting with your financial advisor, seeing what's available in the market because it's a very um, competitive space. All right, so that's the one third, two third rule. Uh, that's how it works. So don't think when you retire, um, all of these funds are going to hit your account, okay? Um, you're going to have to get an Join me on 10 August 2024 in Cape Town. I will be presenting Wealth 101, where I'll be teaching you all about getting your money right and understanding how to build wealth in the South African context. This workshop will be 90 minutes long. It's very intimate, limited seats available in this workshop. We haven't done one in Cape Town before, and I hope to see you there. Tickets available on my website, www.financiallyfabulousfemales.com. All right. If you take a loan on your pension, how much tax? do they take you can't you can't really take a loan on your pension okay um traditional retirement products are um protected from creditors so you you can't really take a loan from it now with the two part coming up in september you would be able to access that seeding portion of thirty thousand rares all right so any questions on instagram Blan? Okay, cool. The next question, other than the banks, where can I invest to get a fixed income? All right, so there's lots of options in South Africa. Um, a lot of you are very conservative. You don't want to take the risk. And um, and you're not happy with the interest that the banks are giving you. And these are options. The first thing you can look at is a retail bonds. Just know that the content of this video is not financial advice. I'm not telling you to, invi uh, to invest in these things. I'm giving you information as to what your options are. It's financial education, not financial advice. All right, so the next thing is a retail bond. So retail bonds is when the government basically wants to borrow from you and you lend them and they issue this bond and you purchase the bond. And past, part of the bond will say, okay, um, our rate today is is 10% for the next two years, next five years, next 10 years. It varies there's a few different types of bonds and you can go online and you can purchase this, right? What's nice about that is um, you know what your return is going to be in advance. It doesn't change. You also get inflation-linked bonds as well, which get, do give you some nice protection. The next thing that you can look at is uh, income funds. You can get this on a Eurotrust-based platform where these income funds, they'll, they'll invest into a combination of corporate bonds, government bonds, um, maybe um, they're holding foreign currency in an interest-bearing account. It'll be a combination of that within an income fund. All right, income funds are playing quite nicely now because interest rates are high. Um, in some cases, we're getting uh, 10, 11, 12% per annum. So it's been very lucrative. And obviously, when the interest rate goes down, the bond rate will uh, fluctuate accordingly. Uh, the next option you have is guaranteed products, guaranteed income products, where you take your lump sum, you invest it, and part of the agreement, you have a fixed rate, you'll know what your income will be uh, throughout the term. The term is usually five years. Uh, for example, if you have a million rand and you put that into a guaranteed income product, they'll pay you 8,000 rand a month, every month, 
for five years. And after five years, it'll give you your million rand back. Right. So uh, that's nice. Um, that's very popular with retirees because they want certainty in their income and they would like their money back after five years as well. All right. So lots of options when it comes to you don't want to you don't want to take the risk. You don't want to play the market. Um, these are some alternatives for you outside of the banking products. Do I have to retire from my pension fund? Well, it depends on your rules at work, actually. Um, yeah, so if, you're, if your work is telling you you have to retire at age 62, um, then most likely you'll have to leave the company at 62. You don't necessarily have to retire. And if you are in a similar sort of uh, situation or your parents or loved ones are in that situation, they don't have to uh, be forced into retirement. Uh, maybe they'll be forced to leave the company, but they don't have to um, retire traditionally as we know it. So you, what, what are your options there are? You could preserve your current retirement and start job hunting, start start consulting or, or do something else um, and then retire when you're ready. So when you preserve it, it's in your name. It's a special uh, pension or provident preserver account. It will grow tax-free. All the regular pension rules will apply to this preserver product. Uh, yeah, So it's quite nice, very flexible. What's nice about the preserver as well is that you are able to make one full or one partial withdrawal prior to retirement in your lifetime. So that's a very handy thing to have for any emergencies that might come up. Next question. How do I keep my tax low? Uh, so we have a whole series on this on our on our YouTube channel. Okay. Um, it's about a 10-part series. It's a nice bite-sized nuggets that you can go and watch, right? But how do you keep your uh, tax low? I think you got to learn about taxes firstly. Understand what is personal income tax, capital gains, and all the various taxes um, that you are liable for in South Africa. The next thing I would encourage you to do is to shift your mindset um, a little bit. I know, especially when you're an employee, it's, it's month to month, and you're living 13 days from one salary to the next. But when you start thinking it in annual terms, um, you start looking at things like exemptions, uh, things like deductions, uh, and things like depreciation, which will help you lower your tax in that financial year. It doesn't have to be every month. Maybe you're paying your high tax rate every month, but there are things that you can do annually to get some of that tax that you've been paying back. All right, government gives us lots of loopholes that you need to learn, that you need to understand. For example, the interest exemption, where you can get interest in South Africa. And if you're under 65, your first 23,800 is tax-free. That, that, that's free money, all right? And you need to be taking advantage of that. Um, the other deduction that we have is RA deduction. Where yes, you'll be taxed every month. Yes, you're contribu contributing to RA and pensions every month. But in a, on an annual basis, that will be deducted and your, your tax will be recalculated and then you can get some money back. All right, so lots of options. You will learn this thing. They shouldn't be teaching it to us, uh, to us in schools, but they don't. So we've created the content for you. So go on our YouTube channel, Financial Financially Fabulous Females, and have a look. All right, and also get yourself um, a good tax person to help you with this. And if you're a tax person watching it, uh, uh, watching this video, uh, a lot of my clients, they say, you know, uh, the tax people, they just tell me what to do, but they don't explain things to me or they do my e-filing, but they don't find solutions. So tax people find solutions for your clients. I've never done e-filing or went to SARS. Is that a problem? Uh, it's a problem if you're getting an income and you haven't been declaring it, All right? So, um, yeah, no, we're not, I live on the right side of the law. Uh, lots of ways to get away from tax, legal ways to keep your taxes low. How do you think the new government will affect the economy? Are we doomed? <laughs> Buying tickets to Dubai. Uh, I don't think we're doomed. Um, I think we just need to be a little bit smart. Um, we we need to control what we can, and the things that we can control is our spending. I know costs are going high. We saw some craziness this week about this whole 200 rand uh, surcharge on electricity, how uh, thing. But control what you can. Things are looking nice, but it's still early days. We just um, um, what a month away after the election. Um, I know it's a, it's a tough one. 
I think there's still a lot of pain to be felt before we can get some real change. But I am not booking tickets to Dubai, Dubai just yet. All right. Okay. My accountant does my e-filing. I don't have my passwords and I want to change my accountant. How do I get my passwords? You're going to have to ask them for it. Okay, they can't keep it away from you. Um, they legally have to give it to you. Or you can just go into your e-filing. I think you'll be able to reset your password as well. But whoever you're changing to, uh, your new accountant, they, they should be able to sort of get that mandate uh, where, where they sign the mandate, where you sign the mandate and have it uh, handed over to the new accountant, then they should be able to change it. I've, I've done it that way before. Okay. There are some questions here. I sort of disappeared. Are you taxed on one withdrawal from from the... Yes. So when you make your one withdrawal from your preservation fund, your provident or your preservation fund, you will be taxed. Okay, and it's a higher tax rate than uh, the retirement tax. What is the difference between the vested and the not non-vested? And will it matter with the two-part system? Okay. So um, if you all... Uh, if you are in a provident fund, you'll end up with two vested pots, right? So there's been a whole retirement reform change that's been happening. And on the 1st of September 2021, uh, provident funds came to a halt on how they function. The names are still there. And everything that was contributed to provident funds uh, before the 1st of March 2021 was vested. Vested meaning it's put in this one pot. And it will follow the provident fund rules and everything after the 1st of March 2021. Although they're calling it a provident fund, it functions as a pension where that one third, two third happens, right? Then come this September 2024, you're going to get a second vested pot where all of your previous contributions will go into a pot again. And it will follow the old or the current pension rules. And from the 1st of September 2024, the, the new pension rules uh, will follow. All right. So that's the two vested pots that we currently have in the new pension system and the one to be started on the 1st of March, uh, 1st of September, sorry, 2024. All right. So it does matter because the vested pot means that whatever's in that whichever vested pot is follows a specific role. If you don't have a provident or not in a provident, that first vested pot wouldn't really affect you. All right, uh, no more questions. The next one, which is the best RA? <laughs> All right, if uh, somebody asks me this question, I don't know whether you're looking for me to rec uh, recommend a specific company or, or something like that, but uh, what the things that you should be looking for if you're looking to start an RA is one, low fees, right? You don't want to be paying a huge, if you're paying a thousand rand, you don't want uh, three, four, five, ten percent of that going towards fees. That means less is going towards your retirement savings and less um, is going to be compounding over time so you're losing a lot of money. All right, and essentially with fees, every 1% that you can knock off in fees, over a 40-year period, you have the potential to double your money. All right, so that's a very powerful thing. So be fee sensitive, negotiate fees with your financial advisor. Um, the next thing you would want to look at is flexibility. For example, you want this product to be able to move with you. When your salary increases, uh, you must be able to increase uh, the, con if you want to increase the contributions to the RA, you should be able to do that. Um, if your salary decreases or pauses for a period, you should be able to pause that uh, retirement annuity without any penalties, without any costs, right? So you want to um, have a product that's adaptable to you, not you force yourself into a product and life companies are like that. Uh, in fact, earlier this afternoon, we got a letter 
from um, a live company where my client is with a live company that you're not happy with the performance, so we want to take out those funds to another RA. And the penalty that the life company is charging her is 10% of her retirement. Right? So she's young. Uh, I'm like, it's worth taking it's, it's worth taking that big hit because we can catch up in another product very quickly because one, our fees will be lower and it'll be my, uh, more flexible and we have a bigger range of funds to choose from. So for, for, your, pair, uh, for your children or if you're somebody who's looking in the market for an RA, Move towards the asset managers when it comes to investments. And there's space for the life companies, yes, um, on certain products. I don't think RAs are it. All right, the next question. Okay, I got a reader of my computer. All right, let's see. Did we answer that one already? Can I uh, can I contribute to my living annuity? I recently inherited some money. Uh, yes, you can. However, you can't do it directly. You can't take your inheritance. Maybe it's a two million, three million. You can't take it and directly put it into uh, a living annuity. So funds to flow into a living annuity must come from a retirement product, like a provident, a pension, or retirement annuity. So usually, in this case, um, or what we do is we do a one day RA where we take the funds, we put it into an RA for one day, and then we initiate uh, the retirement from the RA, and that will flow into uh, a living annuity. And uh, why you'd want to do that is because of the protections that the living annuity provides. For example, it provides tax-free growth within that annuity, a living annuity. However, the income that pay, that's paid to you every month or every year, that will be taxed. Um, also, should you pass away, that a living annuity will pass on to your beneficiaries. Uh, the beneficiaries can take it out as a lump sum. They can just continue receiving that annuity, all tax. Uh, or they could take a combination of taking a lump sum and continuing with that annuity. right? And all of that growth happening, as long as it, it, it's inside that uh, living annuity wrapper, that's all tax-free. So very, very powerful uh, as a state planning tool as well. Very nice because you can keep those funds out of your estate. All right, that's the last question I have. Is there any more questions? Please type it up before we sign up. Uh, what are your thoughts on a gateway investment? I'm not sure what you're referring to as a gateway investment. If you can give me some more details, maybe um, it's a different uh, terminology that I'm not familiar with. If you can explain further, please, and I can give you my opinion. Okay, Instagram is very quiet. You have no questions for me. How what's going on? I just got here. All right, I'm answering all of your questions on money. If you have any questions, uh, type it up and I'll answer it for you. Okay. okay you can get back to me after that gateway investment. Okay, cool. What is a high yielding investment would you recommend? Well, high is very subjective. For me, 30% um, is high. For you, 15% could be high. But, but what's attached to any investment is risk. So we shouldn't just be looking at oh, which is a high yielding investment, but which is a riskier investment that I'm willing to accept uh, with my money. So if you are willing to take a, a minus 40, okay, for a short period of time, um, maybe it will recover in three, four, five years. That's a high risk investment. Um, so yeah, it, it's uh, it's all about the risk and you must be willing to take the risk. 
if you don't want the risk and you want high yields, then a high yield is something like 10, 12% without the risk. But when it comes to high risk investments, um, equity investments, we saw NVIDIA in the last the last two weeks so also surge, and we see that funds that are holding NVIDIA stock surge as well. All right, so it's just it it's more about the risk in association uh, with the return that you're willing to get. If I get divorced strategically, okay, paper divorce, right, and took out my pension, will I not receive my one third when I do retire? Um, if you get divorced and you have to give your partner half, uh, the funds will be taxed and then that split will happen. So if there's anything there, then you then you can retire from it. If if it's not, then obviously you, you won't be able to get access with it. The painful thing about breaking that pot uh, pre uh, before retirement is, is the taxes can be quite he heavy. It's many units trust kind of a, uh, the gateway investment. Are you talking about the Liberty Gateway investment? Okay. Um, okay. All right. Okay. The Liberty Gateway. I don't like buying unit trust directly with Liberty. Uh, again, there's a life company. If you want a broader range of, of files, go directly to an asset manager. The asset manager will be with, they'll be able to give you a whole bunch of funds. Um, if you're comfortable with Liberty, work with the standard platform because they have, a, they have I think, over 1,500 funds to choose from. I'm working towards a freedom fund. Uh, at 40, what value should I be aiming for? Oh, okay, right. So you're looking at fire where you want this lump sum and then you want to uh, withdraw a certain percentage and live out for the rest of your life. I heard 100, 100K is a good target amount. No, it's not. All right. So one, you're going to look at your lifestyle and your expenses. All right. Now, if you're a single person, you're not looking after anybody, you're living basic, basic, um, still 100K is not going to be enough. All right. Um uh, 100k maybe in dollars, not in rands. Certainly not in rands. Um, th that that fire movement is very hard to do in South Africa because it doesn't really consider lifestyles. For example, especially somebody with a family. Um, how do you just save up one lump sum and still put kids through university and try and give them a good start in life? Um, essentially, fire is when you start your retirement years, because now you'll take your lump sum and you'll live off a percentage. Also, if you do that at age 40, remember your taxes. And if you're outside traditional um, retirement funds, the taxes can be uh, quite high because one, you'll be taxed on your growth and you'll be taxed on your income as well. Um, yeah, so it's about working out your expenses and reverse engineering from there as to how much you would need to try and make this happen. And obviously, you're going to have to be very disciplined with your lifestyle. And hopefully nothing exciting happens in your life where you need large sums of money all of a sudden. How to create, uh, how do I create a trust structure when I don't have kids and I don't want my parent to be a beneficiary? Okay, then why why do you want to trust? A, a trust is there to protect um, uh, a lot of your assets from taxes and creditors for your beneficiaries. So if you don't have beneficiaries, um, why do you want to trust? Which asset managers would you recommend for unit trust? Look look at linked asset managers, like linked asset managers, people like Stanlib. Um, yeah, Stanlib is, is, is very nice, the fees are low. And they, the, it's just the variety. So if you're going directly, um, you you need it. Uh, you've got to know how to pick your funds without advice. So if you want advice, 
to see a, a financial advisor. I am 45 and I don't know what to do or how to invest. So you speak to a financial advisor and they will give you guidance. Uh, if you don't have a financial advisor, click the link in my bio and you can book an appointment with me. Any pros of withdrawing a provident fund if the tax is 18%? Okay. Okay, so you're taking a partial or full withdrawal from the preserver fund, not a provident fund. And also it depends on your age as well, at 18%. Something's not right with that that tax amount. Remember, if you on your personal capacity could be on that 18% tax bracket, but when you're making withdrawals from a traditional retirement fund, there's a different tax table. So t tax is not just tax. There's different taxes for different things, and uh, you got to understand which tax that needs to be applied. So one of the benefits of taking funds out of traditional retirement products is oh, you're not bound by Regulation 28. Regulation 28 basically is a regulation that government gives us with the retirement money because they give us all these nice tax benefits and they tell us, painful thing that they tell us is that we can't have more than 45% of our money offshore. And why that's painful is because then the balance of the money has to stay here and uh, being invested in the GSC. And in, in dollar terms, the GSC has just not grown in the last 10 years, right? It's moving sideways. The real growth is happening offshore. So that's the benefit of taking funds out of retirement. Um, you can invest it outside of Regulation 28. And again, you must have a strategy, you must understand risk, and you must understand taxes as well. All right, so back to the trust question. You want to be, uh, I want to be, or life insurance. Okay, you want to be a beneficiary of the trust for life insurance, but whose life are you going to be covering? All right, uh, so remember the trust will have uh, trustees and will have beneficiaries. And ideally you want at least three trustees in the trust, so uh, looking after the trust, so who is that going to be? And whose life are you going to cover? from my provident fund in September and add it to my RA. Um, okay. Depends on your taxes, where you sit on your tax bracket. And also it depends on your investment strategy. I wouldn't put it into an RA. If you're taking it out of your provident um, and you, you're not using it to pay debt or some kind of expense, you're using it versus, I would never put it back into a, another Regulation 28 product. Um, I would uh, I would top up my tax reinvestment. I'd put in unit trust. Uh, and again, how how I know which one to choose would, would be on my uh, tax bracket. So if you're going to be withdrawing from your um, from the seeding from the two pot system in September, and you don't have any debt and you're just do, doing it for investment purposes, don't put it back into a, a Regulation 28 compliant fund. <laughs> 